golden era for invention. Even the craziest ideas were getting their 15 minutes of fame. And one great British inventor who had been struggling for years to be taken seriously finally had his day. Tins of coffee, kitchen scales, a hairdryer. Not the ideal starting point for the invention of a revolutionary machine, you're probably thinking. But if we put two ounces on the scales and then blow hot air straight onto the scales, we'll see that it lifts the two ounces. Now, if we try this with four ounces on the scales, it struggles. So what you do is take a reasonably large tin and place another tin inside it and then blow hot air between the two tins, creating an annular jet that produces a much more powerful downward force. Here we go. And there we have Hoveridge. We're lifting four ounces. And that's the basic principle of the hovercraft. Inventor Christopher Cockrell first carried out this experiment in his garden shed in 1953 and became convinced he could make boats that could fly. To get his idea to fly, Cockrell needed to convince the people with money that his quirky invention would work and be useful. This model, made out of canvas and wood, was the very first hovercraft prototype built by Cockrell in 1955. His flying boat had many admirers, but when trying to raise the finance, he hit an unexpected problem. The Admiralty said it was an aircraft and not a boat, so they weren't interested. The Air Ministry said it was a boat and not an aircraft, so they weren't interested. And the Army just weren't interested. But Cockrell was determined to see his idea come alive. He knew his craft had a totally unique selling point. If I try and push the hovercraft across the ground like that, it's actually quite difficult to do. If we produce our cushion of air between the hovercraft and the ground, it lifts the hovercraft, and then there's no friction between the craft and the ground, and it moves around really easily like so. No friction at all. And after six years, his belief in this frictionless craft paid off. Inspired by the fanciful flying saucer stories, the current crop of inventors is out to make rumor reality, it seems, as with Britain's new hovercraft. The National Research Development Council provided the cash, and in 1959, Cockrell's first hovercraft finally took to the water. The idea may seem outlandish now, but the inventor predicts someday hovercraft the size of the Queen Mary will cross the Atlantic at 100 miles an hour. Now, I've been told that your average hovercraft exerts about as much pressure on the ground as a seagull standing on one leg. So, to prove the gentle touch of the mighty hovercraft, we're going to put it to the egg test. Let the experiment begin. And my hovercraft of choice for this demonstration? Nothing less than the 1969 two-man hoverhawk that Ranulph Fiennes took on his exploration of the White Nile. Ugh. So yes, we're in a bit of a, a, a period time machine here. It's, it's very 60s, it's very Thunderbirds. It's very uh, sort of Danger Man, sort of early James Bond and the Saint. All these things are conjured up by sitting in this uh, extraordinary machine. It's powered by three motorcycle engines ostensibly. One for lift and two for propulsion. I'm going to try and fly over 30 eggs. Wish me luck. Ah. It's not the easiest thing to steer. Ah. Well, on the face of it, 
our hoverhawk friend here has failed the egg test. It has to be said. <clears throat> ah, but look at this. Look at this. I would say that the skirt actually caused the damage to those eggs and the actual downward, inward pressure created by the hovercraft has actually not damaged these eggs at all. And look, look at them, they're all intact. They're all intact, so in fact, our experiment has been an absolute success. The ability to hover makes these machines fast, efficient and incredibly versatile. They're the perfect amphibian, flying over water, sandbanks, snow and ice. Hovercraft can access 75% of the world's coastline, compared to only 5% for boats. Cockrell's invention was an instant hit with the press and the public. And in 1961, aircraft producers Saunders Row were commissioned to start building commercial hovercraft. This is number 25 of the first production hovercraft built for commercial use. The 1965 10-ton Saunders Row Nautical, or SRN-6. It could carry 38 passengers, cruising at 50 knots, 57 miles an hour. And of course, you need some pretty beefy engine power to create the lift and propulsion for a 10-ton machine. Up here we have a single Rolls-Royce Gnome gas turbine aircraft engine. This one engine powers two propellers that drive the hovercraft forward and it also powers this huge fan that blows air underneath the hovercraft to lift it. So, this one should be a doddle to drive. Time for a lesson with pilot Tony Byrne. So, Tony, here you are, a proper hovercraft pilot. Um, let me know a few do's and don'ts then about driving one of these. You press the left hand pedal forward and the craft will turn to the left, which is port. If you look, uh, we've got the... Then there's off. the engine revs, fuel distribution controls, propeller speed, rudder direction, skirt height, dumper valves. What happened? Mm, doesn't sound like the easiest uh, machine to master. Well, would you like to have a go? I would actually, yes. Right. Let's get you in the seat. Okay. Right. Seat in the rudder stirrups, yeah? Yep. The larger the rubber skirt, the higher the hovercraft flies. On full power, the SRN6 lifts to over seven feet above the ground. Okay, so we're up to about 13 and a half. Bring us slightly back. The engine power is being directed to the fan pushing 70,000 litres of air under the craft per second. And very quickly, we're up. 19,000 RPM now. Hold it there. You feel the dancing? Yes. We're, we're hovering now, aren't we? Yeah. We're right up on hover, dancing on the air. The frictionless hovercraft turns incredibly easily. You can spin a 360 degree turn on the spot for the nearest fence, which is looking more likely in my case. No eggs broken, but I think I'll leave it to the expert now. Hmm. Hovercraft have been built in all shapes and sizes, from little one-person explorers to the biggest in the world, the SRN4, which used to carry up to 55 cars and 424 passengers across the English Channel at up to 70 miles an hour in just 22 minutes. The great popularity of Cockrell's invention has spread all over the world. A little bit of British genius that can still reach the places that other machines simply can't. But there's one.